Coming up this week on Cruisin'. This was the last year they produced the Packard, and it is so rare, they only built 588 of these. It's a beautiful cross between the Packard and the Studebaker. Now this, this is the only champion that they put these fins on. I wonder if that was to help with the aerodynamics. Uh, the side louvers, I probably got about three days just bending them by hand. They look great, and wait till you hear what they are. He said, well, your truck's on the dash fire. I said, why? A Studebaker wannabe made famous. Plus, if you want that OEM look, this is how you do it. Nate from the Buckeye Guys shows you how to phosphate parts at home. It's the $25 junkyard special here. Yep, 25 bucks. You gotta see it to believe it. Packards and Studebakers on Cruise In starts now. This week on Cruise In, it's two of my favorite things, rare cars and chili dogs. That's right, I'm Will Burge, and this is the 23rd annual Studebaker and Packard Cruise In right here at the Summit Motorsports headquarters. There's Packards behind me and Studebakers over there, so let's get started. All right, Dave and Diane, what do you got behind you? This is a nice ride. Well, this is uh, my 1958 Studebaker Champion. It's a two-door, which makes it a little rarer than most. Most of them were four-doors or station wagons, and uh, this being a two-door makes it just a tad bit rarer than, than a regular one. How did you come across it? Uh, we, we went, well, I went to a, a, a guy's basement, or to his house with a friend, and in, in the basement garage, this car was sitting there. I fell in love with the car then, and I kind of got away from it. <laughs> I didn't, didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. And then we decided we wanted to buy a car. My brother had this Studebaker here, so I, I liked his car so much that we went back and looked at this Studebaker and bought it. Now, Diane, did you have to give the blessing to make sure he'd go get this thing, or were you behind it the whole way? Oh, behind it. Behind it the whole way? Yeah. <laughs> How much work did you guys have to put into it? Uh, the, the, the biggest problem with this car that we had was interior and paint. The paint was faded very, very bad on the car. I started doing the car myself, but I I didn't uh, didn't know what I was doing. Let's put it that way. So you were almost the biggest problem with the I car. I was work. almost the biggest <laughs> problem. Yes. And then the, you mentioned the paint job. The paint's gorgeous. Is that the original color? No, that that is not the original color. It's as close as we could get. The original paint was very very expensive for this car. So if you could get it, and uh, so what we did, we went in and we chose this color, which is a wild berry metallic clear coat. And it really pops when the sunshine hits Thank it. Thank you. Yeah, it's very, absolutely gorgeous. I love the fins in the back too. They're, I mean, they, they, it, it, they're bare. You see the fins on them, but usually they seem like they almost jet out more on this one for some reason. Now this, this is the only champion that they put these fins on. Uh, 57 didn't have fins, and uh, that was one of the things they did this year to change the car. That and these, they did these headlights. They pop eyed the headlights, but. They did make a twin headlight car, but it was a more expensive car. Uh, okay, so and you guys, and you ride this around quite a bit, right, Diane? Yes, we do. And, and you guys travel all around with this yes, thing? all over the state and surrounding states. Now, when you ride it around the area, just in your area, do you get a, get a lot of looks, a lot of people checking well, on it out? on the way over here today, we're coming down a freeway, and I looked over, and a lady's got a camera out the window, she's taking a picture of it. So we get a lot of that, a real, a whole lot of that. You got to flag her down and charge her $5. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you exactly. go. Exactly. Or let me stand on the hood or yeah. something, yeah. <laughs> I love the interior, too. The interior is very clean. Was the interior in that good of shape when you got it? No, the interior was probably the second worst thing on the car. Uh, a lot of duct tape, <laughs> put it that way. And uh, so again, this is not the original colors on the on the interior, but again, it was very expensive and we really don't have a lot of money. So we went in and we picked this out and, and it just matched up with the car almost perfect. So. Well, it's beautiful and the car is beautiful. And thank you guys for bringing it out today. It's gorgeous. No problem, thank you. All right, George, well, this is a beauty, and it's, it's been on the show before, but we never actually got to talk to you about it. It's good. We're glad to have you on. What, what do you got here? A uh, 1940 Packard 160. It, was it in this condition when you got it? Did you have no, to redo I it? No, I finished all the restoration on it. So what all, what all did you have to do yourself? Uh, I did all the interior, the chrome work. I made the grill, made the bumper bars, made the louvers for the hoods. How long did it take you to get the whole restoration done? Probably five years. Five years? <laughs> Off and yes. on, or was it a constant? Uh, pretty constant. Yeah. Where did you come across it? How'd you find Middle it? Middle Branch, Ohio. Oh, really? A good friend of mine had it. 
Does he ever come up and check it out and be like, damn, I shouldn't have yes. given it to you? Yeah. <laughs> he offered me what he paid me for it and two more cars to go with it. Really? And I, what always grabs me about the Packards is the, the hood ornament. Right. Yeah, is that is that is that kind of what some that people usually stop up and ask you about? Yes, as well? that's the uh, called the Speed Goddess. How much how much original is left on it? Is it almost all completed? everything but engine, transmission, wheels? Really? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, still on the Packard running gears, Packard rear end, Packard front end. What got you into the Packards? Was it just the fact that your buddy had one and you wanted it? Just or was... love them big cars. Yeah. What is your favorite part of this car? As you show people, what is what's the one thing that you always kind of gravitate to? My uh, side louvers and the grill and stuff I made. See a lot of pride in that? Yes, yes. How long did it take you just for those in particular pieces? Uh, the side louvers, I probably got about three days just bending them by hand. Really? Yes. When you get it out on the streets, you get you get the speeds up a little bit in this thing. I mean, it's a, it's a big boy. 70's and... about as fast as I've drove it. Yeah? You don't want to yeah. push any harder than That's that. That's all huh? I want to do. Yeah. How, how, how much does it weigh? 4,700. And what kind of gas mileage you get on this thing? About 13, 14 miles a gallon. Oh, so that's not too bad. No. no. And the interior, uh, you said you did all the interior yourself as well? Yes, I did all the interior. How, how much of a pain was that doing it the first time? Uh, pretty good pain. It was yeah. about a month's work. Yeah. <laughs> Just getting it cut down and get it to fit. Yeah. Well, we pre appreciate you showing it to us. It's absolutely gorgeous. And, uh, and thanks for bringing it out here today. And thanks for actually talking to us this time. Well, thank you for ground. looking. <laughs> Coming up next, the car that everybody thought was the Studebaker, but isn't. Stay tuned to Cruise In. From project to pride and joy, the restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration can make your dreams come true. Our master body, paint, and mechanical technicians have over 100 years of experience. They do research, can communicate every detail of the restoration process, and their restorations win big time awards. Buckeye Classic Car Restoration cars have been winning awards since 2001. Let the restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration turn your project into an award winner. Welcome back to Cruising. All right, Gib, we're here at the uh, Studebaker and Packard show. We're taking a little detour here because this is, uh, we never seen anything like this before. What do you got? 1934 Diamond T, model 211 FF. This is, uh, you don't see many of these around, huh? No, you don't. And so I'd imagine when you bring it out to places, you get a lot of people like us who wander up and go, oh boy, what is that thing you got there, well, huh? Well, that's why I bring them out so people can see it. You know, share it with people. How did you, how did you come across this? Or how did you know about these diamonds? Well, I sold the Diamond T rubber for over two years, and I ran into this guy in Georgia, and he, uh, he had it and he wasn't gonna use it. He had it in a construction garage. So the guy that originally restored it, he was going down there. He said, well, I'll bring that Diamond T back in the same trailer that I took it there 20 years ago. He, he was thrilled. So he was excited just to see somebody who was going to be using it oh, and taking it out. Oh, just to huh? see it again. It's yeah. been 20 years since he saw it. Now, do you always haul hay around, or is that a special occasion? No, I do. a buddy of mine has this farm. And I said, I want to throw some bales of uh, straw up there, and I want a sign if you got one. They dug it out way up in the loft, brand new. When I brought this up here last year, they took all kind of photographs, and uh, they thought it was a Studebaker truck. I don't know why, they never asked me. <laughs> so he told me here two weeks ago at the cruise end, he said, well, your truck's on the dash black. I said, what? So I go over here to register, and these gals over here, I told him, said, that's my truck. I said, what? He said, you must know somebody. So it's the Studebaker and Packard show and the Diamond T. Now it is. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite part of this truck? What, what, what's really, what drew you to it? I always liked the 30s. My mom said I should have been born in the 30s. In the 30s, a lot of vehicles had these fins on them. And when I went to look at it, I wanted to see if I could fit in it. And I'd go right in it. And then the display that you have behind it is, it's, that's uh, from a showroom, like an actual dealership from showroom? From a dealership. The display, this guy over in Youngstown had an auction. Nobody knew what it was. Really? Nobody else bid against me. They started out five bucks. I said, 50. <laughs> so that's what I got it for. That's something else. And you and you, you don't find those anywhere. I mean, that's... I've never seen one. And all the Diamond T guys have been in it 40 years, never saw one. 
The bed back there. You said the bed is, well, what kind of wood is that? That's all oak. Oh, and that's okay. how they made it when they... And he reproduced it exactly like it was in 1934. Really? Yeah. So that's pretty heavy duty back there as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you made all the rails that take off. You made them just like they were then. Oh, uh, like I said, we appreciate you showing it to us. Very cool truck. Well, I'm glad you stopped by, and uh, I appreciate it. All right, Bill, well, this is unlike anything I've seen here or anywhere else. What do you got? I took a 57, 58 Studebaker and found out that it was expensive rebuilds. So I went the cheap route. It's the $25 junkyard special here. Went to junkyards around and found pieces, parts that I could paste on here to make it look good. And I wanted to modernize it a little bit. So I put the Corvette nose cone, it's a 99 Corvette nose cone on there which I bought from a fellow for $25. And it's a Dodge Neon sunroof up here. And the seats are out of a conversion van, $25. It seemed to be my limit for anything. So that, that was it. You said, I'm not spending more than $25 right. per piece, huh? So like the nose cone, the guy wanted $50 for it. And I said, well, how about $25? He said, well, the emblem's worth $25. And I said, well, peel the emblem off. So he did. He gave it to <laughs> me for $25. Bucks. Now, you did this whole thing yourself? Yes. And are you a mechanic or? No, backyard mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> And, and you did this all the body work and everything yourself. Yes. How long did it take you? 753 hours I got in the car. It took two years to do it. Wow. Wow, that's something else. And the wood is amazing. I mean, you do all that yourself too, huh? Yeah, well, my uncle helped. He got the tree for free. Some lady didn't like it because it was dropping walnuts on her porch. So I trimmed my whole house with it and the dashboard and the back of this Studebaker. I turned it into a Holland Hawk, I call it. Now, when you did you have this as a, a, a plan for it in the beginning, or did you just kind of go with the flow and uh, what you found? I just, Started up one night when I was sleeping. Got up about three o'clock in the morning. My wife goes, where are you going? I said, I just thought of this idea. So <laughs> this car that she's been trying to get, get me to get rid of for two or three years, rusting out in the yard, I just started to start cutting off the back and making a pickup truck bed out of the back of it. And I wanted a six foot bed like an El Camino, but unlike El Camino, this is like an extended cab El Camino because I've got a little back jump seat. I moved the seats forward so small people can sit in the back which I've taken some of the neighborhood kids around for a ride. <laughs> so this is, this is like a Frankenstein. It's a, it's a beautiful monster at the end is what it is. My wife calls it the Heinz 57. <laughs> now the, the color, I mean the color absolutely pops and catches your eye. How did you settle on that color? Uh, originally I wanted to paint it burgundy and my wife said if you paint it burgundy you're not going to see that walnut. So she picked ah. this color out. She's Irish. I, so oh, that's what it is, yeah. the leprechaun green and on After it. I got done painting it, I thought, oh my God, this thing's leprechaun green, but it really stands out. People saw it, catches people's eyes, and then they wonder, what the heck is it, you know? Yeah, it almost looks like two completely different types of cars from the front and the back. Is that what you're going for with it? Yeah, I was going for a more modern look, uh -huh. but I like the Studebaker lines. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a rolling swap meet is what it is. <laughs> yeah, everywhere I pull in a gas station, these kids come over with their little cell phone cameras. Can I take a picture of your car? I get a minute to take a picture inside it. It's got to be a fun drive. Oh, yeah. Everywhere I take it, it's like a car show just pulled into the lot. People just want to see the inside with the walnut in there. You don't see that too often. Well, that's amazing. It's, it's definitely different than anything we've seen, and we appreciate you showing it to us today. Oh, thank you very much. Coming up. Basically, nobody in the old days used to tell you how to do this stuff, and you always wondered how they got these finishes on their fasteners. The Buckeye Guys show you how next on Cruise In. Welcome to this week's edition of Cruising with the Buckeye Guys. Today, I'm gonna to show you at home how to do a Concours phosphate uh, parts restoration on your car if you're doing a Concours restoration. If you want that OEM look, this is how you do it. What's in here is um, gun bluing, okay? You can get it on, by the gallons on the internet. And when you get it, um, you dilute it 10 to one and you get it to 190 degrees. Um, and what that does is, it's like an OEM finish. If you look at an automobile factory, the cars go through a dipping process. What we're doing here is, we're doing a small, mini um, OEM coating operation right here in our shop. What I'll do is, I got the motor mount, and I got the stop here for demonstration purposes. This being a cast iron piece, this part here will either be lighter or darker than my um, steel piece there. Now, what causes that is the properties of this uh, cast iron product. So we'll look at it. I'm going to dip it in right now. And uh, we'll let it sit there for five to ten minutes. 
Basically, nobody in the old days used to tell you how to do this stuff, and you always wondered how they got these finishes on their fasteners. Well, this is how you do it. This is cooked for about 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to pull one out individually here, and I'm going to put it into this bucket of water down here. I'm going to pull one of these out of the water, and I'm going to blow it off really pretty quick here. And I'm going to put PB Blaster on it, just as an oil coating for demonstration purposes. This is a part here. Once the oil dries, it can go on the car. What this will do is if you were looking for a blacker part that the OEM was like a really, really dark phosphate finish, this will be your product for you. These two metals too should be different colors as well when we're done. Uh, we'll show you the phosphate ones here in a few seconds um, and how they're different colors. So when you look under your, your brand new car or you picked up at the dealership, you'll see natural parts and 90% of the time they're been plated like this, but at a larger scale. You can see how dark it looks, it looks really good. Put that in a detailed engine compartment, you'll be sitting there and this is how you win the shows um, with phosphated parts like this. this, that's the difference. So this Insta Black, what this is doing, this is a very quick process. These parts will turn really black. I mean, look how black that got. Really, really black, I'll go right to the water. The reason why I use PB Blaster is PB Blaster is a corrosion um, type of penetrating oil. These um, Insta Black parts have dried, and I'm going to show them to you here um, and compare them to the phosphate ones. We've got the frame mount here. Here's how black it is here, so you can see the difference, what kind of finish you're looking for. This here really showed the impurities in this metal. If you look here, and you want to zoom in, you can see how it's unplated in those areas. And it's even unplated on the back. Even though this was sandblasted clean metal, the properties in this wouldn't let that adhere to it. Sometimes that happens, and that's really, really, in my opinion, cool Concours detail. You get that with the gun bling as well in some parts sometimes. It just looks so cool um, when the Concours judge sees that. They know the guy did the car right. What you've seen here is just a little step in the Concours detailing world that'll get you ahead in the game of winning a uh, Concours Restoration Trophy or, or what do you want to say, Grand National Concours the Elegance Award. Thanks for watching Cruising with the Buckeye, guys. Coming up on Cruising. Wasn't this color, wasn't this condition. And she looked at it, she says, what in the world is that? That is an extremely rare packer. Next on Cruise In. Now back to the 23rd annual Summit Racing Studebaker Packard Show on Cruise In. All right, guys, we got a, a rare gem behind you here. You, you tried to bribe me with a chili dog, but you didn't even need to do it. This one's this one's a, it's a beauty. What do you got? This is a 1958 Packard Hawk. This was the last year they produced the Packard. And it is so rare, they only built 588 of these, of which today we know of roughly about 275 or so left. That includes the parts cars. Really? So how many are in actual working condition, would you estimate? If I was to guess, I'd say less than 100 in this kind of condition. I was able to ride in one of these when I was 15. Thought it was a very unique car. I always thought one day I'd get one. And I was blessed seven years ago, my wife Julie found me looking at it on eBay. Wasn't this color, wasn't this condition. And she looked at it, she says, what in the world is that? I said, well, I said, honey, I said, that's something I've wanted for about 35 years. She looked at me and she goes, you know, you're almost 50 years old. If that's your dream car, go get it. She didn't tell me twice. Now, Julie, first of all, it's better than a lot of things you could find him looking at online. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and second of all, did you expect when he'd get it home, he was going to rip the whole thing apart and start redoing it? Not for a minute. I thought it was going to come home, short stay, we'd be done. No. No? How, how long did it take to do the restoration on it? It was about a six-year project. Oh, wow. It was pretty intensive. We completely dismantled the whole car. Didn't see a need to take the body off the frame, but we did rebuild everything. Uh, did you did you buy in quickly, Julie, or, did you, or is it one of those things where you're like, I don't see it, I don't see it until it was done? I didn't see it until it was done. Yeah. I could not understand what the big hoo-ha was over it. But. <laughs> <laughs>
She walked out in the garage. I thought she was going to have a stroke. She looked at it and she goes, you paid all that money so you could strip it? <laughs> and is that is that maroon or does it have a special name? Or Well, officially it's Shadow Tone Red Metallic. Oh, of course. How could I not know that? Yes. <laughs> and the, uh, the roof is jewel beige. Oh, okay. And this is an original color, but uh, I thought it was interesting. 588 of these were built and they only painted two with the beige roof. Did you ever think you'd actually be, get a shot at getting one of these? I mean, obviously it was always a dream, but did, did you think you were going to end up with one one day? Absolutely not. Yeah. You know, we had a, uh, I used to have a 60 Studebaker Lark, and I had to get rid of that when I was a displaced auto worker, had to go back to school. I got rid of the Lark, I thought, okay, my, my antique car days are done. And then when she caught me looking at this and told me to buy it, I about fell over. I always ask people, what is your favorite part of this car? Like, you're, the one thing that you always kind of go back to. It's got to be the outer arm pads. No other car was ever produced with an a, a outer arm pad. And after being in a show all day, it's so practical because you can put your arm out there, no burn. It does, it's not hot. And we think this might be why there's so many of these left, because people like had to put them in the garage, you know, because they didn't want to keep them out in the weather. Now you see, you see the Golden Hawk on the front there, and you see those on the Studebakers too, so who had it first? What's, what's the story with that? In 54, Packard bought Studebaker. In 56, they decided to shut down the Detroit plant and put all the production at the Studebaker plant in South Bend, Indiana. It was a combination of the two, so, you know, people ask me, is that a Studebaker engine? Well, yes and no. It's Packard owned Studebaker, so you could say they fed off of one another. They vended the Hawks together. But, it, but the Studebaker Hawk is the one that is most common. Every time we take this out to the show, we repeatedly we hear, we never knew Packard made a Hawk. Really? Yeah, it's, it's definitely an attention getter. Well, what a beautiful day it was out here at the 23rd annual Studebaker and Packard Cruisin' here at Summit Motorsports. Thanks to all the fine people at Summit for putting on a great event. Thanks to Rob Rainey at r, &R Entertainment for keeping us grooving all day long. And thanks to you for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Will Burge saying so long on Cruisin'.